Welcome to Dyson Sphere Program. My name is Yuno. Today we're going to be talking about hydrogen, balancing hydrogen. Do you have too much? Do you have too little? Today we're going to talk about some of the things to balance it. Uh, I'm going to be going over the basic methods that you might already know about and the problems those methods have. Then I'm going to hop into my solutions and then at the end some footnotes. And before we begin, I'm just going to say this right out front. These are just my solutions. They're not going to be the best solutions. And if you have any of your own tips or solutions to how to deal with hydrogen, toss them in the comments below. All right, let's get into this. So the first thing you might have heard people say is burn it. This is a mistake. Do not burn your hydrogen. First of all, it produces like no power. You have to put down a million of these things just to like get rid of it and balancing it is just going to be a mess. So and I have these separated so they're on their own power grid. You can see one of these with the thermal power plants gets about 65 megawatts, but it doesn't burn it if you're not actually requesting that 65 megawatts. So if you've got hundreds of these all lined up ready to burn your hydrogen, it's just not going to work. Same thing here with the fuel rods. Just, just avoid burning it if you can. Deuterium is nice as personal fuel, but as a source to like get rid of your hydrogen, it's just not going to work. It's going to have the same problems. It's not going to run if you can't actually request that power. And then one last thing that should be obvious, but is also a big problem, is containers. You can totally turn it into deuterium, make these containers, and you're going to want to do this regardless. But when you're using this for your excess hydrogen, it's just not going to work in the slightest bit. The only things these are used for is eggs, and the only thing eggs are used for is space warpers or green science, which in the long term, the only thing you use green science for is white science. And so if you're going to be making tons and tons of white science, you're going to be scaling up every other factory in your entire galaxy. You're going to have to make all your other colors of sciences, and that means you're going to have to do stuff like get more oil, get more graphene, make more photons. All these things can have the hydrogen byproducts. They just have just nasty stuff with hydrogen. You don't want to try and scale up this to get rid of your hydrogen because you're just going to run into more problems where you have just more and more hydrogen problems. So now I'm going to start with my solutions. I'm going to kind of work from early game onwards. And so here I've got a bit of a refinery set up just doing your basic plasma refinery. Now when you're first in the early game obviously it's not going to look like this and the one thing you're going to do with it is red science it's that simple it's not usually a problem for you at that point but once it starts building up something that's really good to do is run it through reform refine all you do is you put in a little bit of coal and you put in all of the hydrogen and the oil from this into the exact same amount of refineries for the reform refine i usually put down one or two extra just just to like get it through the system and then you will be left with nothing but your oil now that does mean that if you wanted hydrogen for your red science at this point still well mm, it's not gonna be easy to balance that way but we'll kind of get into balancing in a minute uh, the way this is kind of set up you'll have the oil come out and then the inputs go straight into here but you won't actually send it out by drone Instead, it's just going to feed back into this one directly so that it is very self-contained in its own system. And then same with this one. Don't feed it back into itself because you'll have problems with this oil and this oil mixing together. And when the system's full and there's a bunch of both in here, they'll take the oil, even though there's both that are meant to be processed. So you really got to keep it separate so something I'll do is I'll bring all the outputs out here pot, uh, put them in a splitter and then I'll have some other build going on on this side and it, usually I'll have one extra little spot and you can just shove the oil in there and have it be picked up or even better is have your build for your plastic right next to this and then you can have your oil right here and then it can even feed out into other 
plastic builds if it needs to. But then as you get a little further in the game and you start to work with grafting, you're going to start with this recipe and you're going to hate it. You're not going to have sulfuric acid. You're going to hate it. And as soon as you get your hands on fire ice, you're going to switch to this recipe and you're going to love it until you start having hydrogen problems which will happen with this recipe. This recipe is very nice for the mid game, but as soon as you start scaling up, as soon as you start having hydrogen problems, just switch off of it. Just switch back to this because you'll very quickly be able to get sulfuric acid in bulk from oceans. And this will be the much better recipe in the long term. When you get to the end game especially, you won't have to constantly come back and look at, oh, is my hydrogen this and that? No, it's just one output. Easy peasy. And then once you get a little bit further, the next thing that has a byproduct of hydrogen is photons. And it's really simple when you're just making the fuel rods because it's all of the hydrogen plus all the deuterium evenly comes in here to make fuel rods. But when you're making science specifically, you'll notice that you only use up or rather, you use all of your hydrogen from here to use to make half of the amount that you need for the red science, is what I'm trying to say. So basically, if you keep this hydrogen output self-contained to these things, this one will always be even and balanced, and then this one will have hydrogen coming in, but will always require more. And so then what you do is you just bring in the excess from orbital collectors. And what's really nice is what you can do is when you have hydrogen here, so let's say you're nice and full, the whole thing's full, you're, it's pouring out to your uh, red science factories. What's going to happen is it'll slowly, slowly go down and go down. But while it's in this kind of threshold above 18,000 before your drones or your vessels rather can go out and collect more, the hydrogen will first come in from here. And if you're worried about this being the priority, just set the drone load just as low as you want. Normally I have it on 100, but just set it nice and low so that it constantly feeds into here. That way this hydrogen will be used before it'll go and collect from the orbital collectors. And in theory, it should clean up everything from here. Now the thing is when you're at this point of the game, you're probably scaling up. You're probably doing lots of this, but you're also probably doing lots of all these other things that have these byproducts. And so it's gonna be even more important to utilize Reform Refine for all that plastic you're gonna need for broadband and to definitely be on this sulfuric acid recipe. And that will keep hydrogen from these things just completely self-contained and just out of the way or in this case non-existent and then in this one you keep it contained in science and only ask for extra hydrogen from orbital collectors and that is going to be how you feed everything else that requires hydrogen casmir crystals deuterium anything that you want hydrogen for pull it in from orbital collectors it's the only way that it's going to work especially because those things need lots and lots and lots, and it's not easy just constantly balancing back and forth. One last little footnote. This is not my recommendation, but this is technically a solution. I am not saying to do this. I'm not saying this is good. In fact, most of you probably do this and don't want to, and that's the reason why you're looking for a solution. But at different points in the game, you're going to be doing different things. Sometimes you just need to build it up a little and just kind of get rid of all of it and just delete it. I still have that thing on, so I have to click every single one. But you know what? When you're in the early game, when you're in, when you're in the mid game or whatever, you only have to do this once or twice. And then you can kind of focus on getting your recipes what you want them to be to not have this kind of problem in the first place. But just a good way to know solutions exist. All right, well, once I'm finished here, that's gonna be everything. Thanks everybody for watching. And have a good one. Speed run these last couple, hurry up. <laughs> Alrighty.
Have a good one, everybody.